Alright, hello everybody, I'm Conquering History Games, and uh, welcome to the start of a new campaign on the channel. This is uh, the Quadros Brazil, uh, which, um, so the reason I finally started, started to do this, I think I had mentioned it in my pre-recorded series, is uh, because Brazil in Hearts of Iron IV, the Moe Order, and the New Order, technically, I suppose, um, excuse me are um they have a lot of different paths that you could take uh and so i thought i would do something similar to what i did when i played the united states uh in the new in the new order for the first time where um where the first time i kind of had a goal but i mostly went in blind and then once i had reached a certain point you know that's when i did the george wallace uh series so uh I've uploaded enough of the pre-recorded Brazil episodes that uh, you guys now know that I'm not doing the Quadros path in that one. Uh, so I figure since you now know I'm not going to do that, um, I now have this. Alex says you got done with work for the week. Also, I have Monday off since I'm a federal employee. Oh, nice. What day are you getting off? What? Uh... Anyway, but hi there, Mad Beast Yeti, on his, uh, his last tour of home before he goes away. Uh, anyway, let's just go ahead and jump into it here uh, while people straggle in. Uh, Brazil, land of contrast. Erika. Columbus Day. Oh, right. Yeah. I'm also a federal employee, but I'm pretty freaking sure I'm not going to have that day off. Probably be delivering Amazon packages. Still so catchy. Alright, people, yeah, there we go. Now we got the people straggling in, getting in that double digits. I don't know how good my thumbnail is. I'm gonna do a different one for the other live streams. Whenever you want to boot up, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, the Southern Juggernaut in this corner. The Southern Juggernaut, the Republic of the United States of Brazil, the largest country in South America, perhaps the strongest. It. Oh, oh God, sneezing. <laughs> Excuse me. Huh. Oh, hello there, Ian. And uh, apologies to woo headphone users over that sneeze. <laughs> All right. So yeah, Revolution of 1930, backed by opposition reformists, military officers. Vargas came into power. There was the Vargas. He repaired damage from the Depression. Vargas faced three uh, revolutions and pushes by constitutionalists, communists, and fascists. So he consolidated his power. This leads to the Estado Novo. World War II starts. Uh, Vargas stays out. So, yeah, then we come in on the side of the Allies. Brazilian Excavationary Force. Etc., etc. You know, whatever. Let's just get to it. Bye, Brazil. <laughs> nice emoji, Ian. <laughs> and hello there, Porky. Okay, so what we're going to be doing here um, so for those of you who have not been watching my pre-recorded Brazil campaign where I went in blind, uh, what we basically were doing is, um, we were, at the beginning of the game, you have this power struggle going on between Lot and Quadros, and we were trying to keep it, uh, very even, while also making sure that their relationship shifted from satisfactory um to collapse and then that leads into the things that then happen uh so what we're gonna be doing in this one it's kind of also blind because i don't know what's gonna happen once i do it but what we're gonna be focusing on is trying to increase quadros's influence so essentially everything that um quadros 
who uh, is in the, in the Moe order is uh, the portrait is of Lammy from uh, Hollow Live. Um, one of the better designs, uh, I think, in the in their canon. They're all great designs, but particularly good uh, is this one. Ah, yes, Brazilian. We say Boa Noite. I know this is Spanish, but the Portuguese it throws me off between the, the regular verbs. And the spellings at times and pronunciations of letters. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to stream this in Portuguese. I'm sorry to tell you all that. Um, anyway, uh, so I don't know what's going to happen as we increase her influence, but we're sure going to find out. But first, we begin with fireworks in Rio. It's okay, Rafael, I love your channel. Oh, no, 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 you don't have to apologize for anything. I'm the one who needs to be sorry. Damn me not knowing Portuguese. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and say that you guys already know how um, a lot of Brazil works, because you've, of course, been watching my pre-recorded series, but if anybody has questions, please let me know. Otherwise, I'm just gonna kind of be slamming it forward, at least initially here. Um, yeah. Do you want that reconnaissance? Also, the logistics. Okay, yeah. Because a lot of this stuff is, is just things that, you know, it's just set up. It's just explaining the situation. So I'm going to kind of be going through it. Unless it's directly um, related to... Goodness gracious, that is something. Um, di directly related to Quadros. Now, I think I have some air assault divisions. There we go. Only one. Let's fix that. Try to get a few of these up and running. Uh, okay, basic jets. That. Uh, I'm just gonna get maxing out the helicopters as much as I can, although. Gonna get rid of these jet fighters. Okay. Yeah. Try to do Dangus Spear. Hmm. Got no civilian factories right now. It's okay. So somebody's saying who's Quadros. Um, okay, so I guess yeah, I should I should talk about who uh, Quadros is. So Hanio Quadros. Let me let me pull up a picture of him. Give me a second. Okay, here we go. So this is Hanio Quadros who um, is the person we're going to be uh, playing as today, who, who this campaign is going to be built around. So yeah, thank you for reminding me. I should have done this just like I did with the George Wallace one at the beginning. So he is uh, predominantly known for his work in um, Sao Paulo, where he was a, um, a, a politician there for many years. Uh, decades apart, he was mayor. So, like, he was their mayor in the 50s and also in the 80s. Um, and he also was briefly the president of Brazil um, from January to August of 1961, where uh, he resigned. Um, but, uh, gosh, where should I start with his story? Um, okay, so basically he was a lawyer. And uh, a teacher before he was a lawyer. That's how he paid for law school. And um, and then in, in in the forties he got elected to the city council. Um, and then eventually he runs for mayor and uh, in the fifties and is elected. And uh, he he gets known for being a, a non corrupt and honest and innovative uh, politician who's really, uh, he was really working class uh, focused. But he also was good on the economic side uh, where he balanced the budget. So uh, he then tried to run for governor of Sao Paulo, uh, but he lost. Very, very close race. Um, actually, no, he didn't lose. He won, that one am I getting right? No, because I remember it was, like, it, was like, it was like Kennedy and Nixon, but no, he won, excuse me, he won. Um, Let's see here. Uh, so, oh, cool, cool. We got more people coming in. Nice. Uh, so, anyway, he, uh, and by the way, I'm talking about the real life 
um, Quadros right now. We'll read his bio in game in a minute. But yeah, he becomes the governor, and uh, he's known for being a populist. You know, very, uh, very working class. And um, his now a lot of different politicians adopt a lot over the years in different countries adopt different logos, symbols, things like eagles. Animals are usually pretty popular, but he his symbol was a broom. Um, you know, like in uh, the you know that movie uh, Oh Brother Where Art Thou in 1930s Mississippi, the reform candidate he's up there with a broom and he's like, we're gonna sweep this state clean. So that's what this guy was like, also. So he, he resigns um, he resigns from being the governor of Sao Paulo so that he could run for president. I'm not yeah, but anyway, uh, and he he creates uh, a co the head of a coalition because it's kind of like how um, you sometimes see this in, uh, in in U.S. politics where like parties will nominate because you'll have all these like little local parties or third parties where like the local parties will still nominate like oh this is who we want you to vote for. Um, so, so he ends up being uh, the presidential nominee of a few different parties, um, including the UDN and the PTN, which are like the Democratic Union and the Labor Party, respect respectively, which is going to be important when we talk about things here. Um, and uh, he runs against Enrique Lott, who was uh, a member of the Brazilian Army. So... Quadros wins, and it's a freaking landslide victory. Um, although it still wasn't a majority, it was a plurality. That's just how like the, it works, you know, multi-party running thing. Um, and so what's important about him is that it's a peaceful um, transfer of power, but it's also somebody who's not, um, what do they call him, a, a, var a Vargo... What do they call them? A Varguis? You know, the people who are really into Vargas. Those people. Um, so, anyway, he ends up... Uh, he, he ends up becoming president, and he's trying to do things like reduce corruption. He's trying to get ties with Africa. He's trying to stay non-aligned in the Cold War. Um... But uh, after, a f and as somebody already said, he, he did give the, the Southern Cross, or the Cruzeiro del de Sul, to Che Guevara, um, which made people think he was a communist, uh, which he definitely wasn't, or at least, I don't know, I shouldn't say definitely, I'm not a super um, expert on it, uh, but like, he was working class sympathetic, but that didn't mean he was a communist. Unless you're like one of those people who says that uh, like peronismo is communism, like maybe you can say it's leftist, but communism. Let's take a deep breath. Uh, anyway, so he ends up uh, resigning kind of out of nowhere in August of '61 uh, because of his opposition. And I've heard that it's it said that he, and this is going to be relevant later, um, that that he resigned as like a power play because he thought that the people would rise up to, or like the military or somebody would say no no come back and then he'd be able to come back and he'd have more power because he was like asked to come back um so anyway uh and at the time his uh, vice president who we're going to talk about later Goulart was not in the country so there was like a temporary uh president and then that leads to a coup uh but that was a few years later um, anyway, uh, so, yeah, that, that's pretty much his life. He, he lived for a while, you know, made a comeback later, became mayor again, almost became governor again. Um, yeah, so, anyway, that's, uh, that's Quadros in real life, and, uh, let's get to it. Get back to the game. Oops, oh goodness, oh goodness trouble here okay oh gosh I because I was focusing on the thing I didn't see that gosh a lot of the chat got busy uh, working class conservative he was weird but Brazil was weird uh, let's see real life 
Currently, they're actually separatists from Brazil who want to make the state of Sao Paulo into an independent country. So yes, it was a power play. It failed beautifully. <laughs> yeah, because not only did he not get us back, but like when his vice president came back, because his VP, uh, Gilard, who I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, was in China. So he didn't, there was technically no president. And so he flies back and, but it's like a couple of weeks have gone by. And um, by the time he gets back, the Congress had passed the constitutional amendment that changed it to a parliamentary form of government, so it weakened the power of the president. Uh, anyway. Varguis, that's what it's called, Varguis. I think there wasn't an A in there. Okay, so we've got this Trans-Amazonian Highway thing, which I admit I don't entirely know how it works. Uh, but we're gonna try. <laughs> yes, we'll try. <laughs> yes, we'll try. And, uh... It's not that I don't know how it works, but it's just, it's, it's a long play. Uh, but I think we've got all the housekeeping pretty much done. Um, we can just do some cleanup here and stuff, but we can go ahead and unpause, I think. Yeah, probably not going to be a real long stream today. Um, but, uh, you know, let me know. Or not let me know. It's like, I'm just, I'll let you know if I suddenly have to go, but it'll probably try to do like an hour. Little wooden boats. We're getting nowhere. Resources are limited. We've got to end these pirates. Yeah, so basically pirates are messing with our navy, and they're mostly German-sponsored. Okay. Okay, report on political situation. There is the PSD and PTB who run uh, the country. It's like, yeah, let's click the election thing. So, here we go. The PS, the, the, you have the different federal parties. Okay, okay, here we go. So, like, we have the PSDB, who rule in the tradition of Varguismo, the political theories and mythology of Gutillo Vargas. And there is the PTB, uh, which is left-leaning and similar in ideology to the CNPP, focuses on labor and unions. Uh, there's the UDN, which is conservative, that aligns with our Vice President Quadros, and is popular opposition to the PSD PTB block. Okay, so PSP is populist, PRP is right wing. Uh, so those are like not super relevant. Yeah, broom time. <laughs> um, distractions. Uh, excuse me. One second. Mm. So. Quadros, what is so incredibly urgent? Lot, so this is Lot, laid back in his chair, eyes closed. Anio uh, Quadros was hardly his idea of an ideal vice president, but like it or not, Quadros was who the people wanted. Could he be effective on occasion? Certainly, but Quadros could also be... abrasive. Lot, I've been <laughs> waiting for two hours! Listen, listen. Are you listening? So this is on the phone. These Argentinians, they're, they're building this dam, right? Uh, and it'll be bad for us, for Brazil. T terrible. So, I need your signature or something to get them to stop, I think. You took a very long time, sir. Johnny, are you drunk? Honey, are you drunk? Lot was irritated. He had said... She had sent Quadros to Argentina to negotiate with them over the dam, not to get drunk. You took too long. So, I had a little drink, tiny. These, these Argentinians, they aren't going to see me until tomorrow anyway. Why not? Four hours ago, when I started calling, I was sober. You just took too long. This is entirely inappropriate, Hanyo. I don't even understand what you want from me. Let's have this conversation tomorrow. Bullshit! I've been calling for eight hours, Lot. Just say the thing, Sam, that I could do it. That I could pay back construction costs? I think that's it. Say it. Say it. Come on. They make me pay to make calls from here, Enrique. Fine, fine. Do what you need to do, Hanyo. But tomorrow I need a full report on whatever it is you're trying to tell me. Understood? Yeah. Yes, I'll do these things. Good night, Enrique. Thanks. Be quicker next time, Quadros said before hanging up. 
Sleep it off, honeyo. Oh, by the way, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I probably should like play a clip or something of uh, some Hollow Life Lammy, so you guys know who uh, who this is. So it's like Lammy. Uh, let me try to find. The, I think it's under raw. Where is the the thing? No, let me try Hollow Life. Grip Et Lammy. Try to find a specific one. But this is this is just so precious. She she she. What's great about her is she can imitate a lawnmower. Oh my gosh! Amazing. Check this out. So yeah, this is Quadros. This is our vice president and who we're playing. Look at these enormous sleeves. They look like the cannons on a Blastoid's back. Anyway, anyway. Yeah, she's a, she's a, she's a lawnmower. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna try to. Let's, I don't know. We'll see if I can do the voice. Buddy, 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 buddy. Uh. Anyway. So. Let's get back to it, shall we? Uh. Hold on a second. I have a little problem here. Little problem. Little problem. Uh. There we go. We're back. Jeff Ferry is going, what is happening? We were just looking at uh, what Quadros looks like. That's the person who's, uh, who, who we're playing. Now you have that visual in your head. The lights of Rio. Yeah, just saying things are hard. Brazil keeps its course and we might be okay. Hope is in the air. Maybe that's how. Just now I'm imagining. I know it's a lawnmower sound, but what if what if she was on the phone thinking that, like she's trying to make it ring? Buddy, 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 buddy. It's ringing. Buddy, 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 buddy. Yeah, anime sub mod for TNO. You got it. Okay, so. Both of these things are good, but uh, I don't know. Do we want to come over here and start on industry stuff right away, or wait? Quadros plan complete. Fences decrease. Yeah, phone's ringing. Pick it up, and they haven't even dialed. Let's do Lobster War first, actually, because there's some Quadros events this way. So the Lobster War is basically us fighting with uh, Germans. Uh, you know, we actually need to get rid of this because it hurts our weekly stability and uh, conquest as well. What a freaking picture for the space race! Like, are you gonna tell me this is what the Nazis launched? Come on now. Uh, yeah. So, so this will help with our political power game. Um. Yeah, so, so essentially we've got, there's people who are interfering, they're going into our fishing waters, and it's definitely the Germans out here doing it, uh, and whatnot. Where's Dahomey? I think Dahomey might be in the Badlands, or is it, or is it here, GBE land? Give a land? Around here. Uh, okay, victory for diplomacy. Uh, two Japanese tourists were kidnapped by pirates. No shots were fired, but millions were spent on bribes, information, and appeasement. All right. Hey, Shimiak, I wish you had finished the Nevis plan. I know you don't want to raise taxes, but you know, well. Oh, hey, friend Chan. Thank you very much for the luck. Hope you're doing well. It's always said like this cod war chg yeah it's lobster war apparently there's a book about cod out there that was written like a history book and the guy that's his gimmick he does cod salt and milk uh all right let's reassure the top brass here i want to make sure that military loyalty is up hmm. all right the lobster war we're reading documents, the war minister's there. Might of the Brazilian Navy cannot defeat a few pirates. Unbelievable. Yeah. Subsistence fishermen from West Africa and largely commercial uh, ships from Central Africa continue to illegally enter our waters and take large amounts of fish. The Central African ships mainly are prized lobsters. I've stated two destroyers are simply not enough. I'm requesting a larger task force to stop this threat once and for all. 
But although you will have your task force. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's why we do the lobster war. The debuff is pretty bad. So, deploy the Vatilla! Alright, it is election season. It's time again for the political parties to gear for election season. One third of all Senate seats are up for election, one in each state. Okay, so we're going to be going with Quadros, so that means we vote UDN. So now we can come over here. This is the same place where we can like do the developments or whatever. We come over here, and now we could work on other things. So like, uh, we have Sao Paulo here. I don't know if one of those seats is up. I think it is. Uh, we want to campaign for one of the UDNs, yes. Let's try to flip Sao Paulo. Campaign is currently active. Now the thing is, I don't know if I can do it in... Yeah, we can only do it in one area at a time, but... I'd like Sao Paulo to go with us. Check Bolivia to see who's in charge. They're going with Gooding. Bolivia is being led by Hugo Benzer Suarez. Er, yeah, Benzer Suarez. Here in Portugal, we love salted codfish. If there's a Norwegian in the chat, please don't cut our supply of cod. Yeah, you know what? Let me let me let me check this out. Like, I'm gonna look this up real quick. Yeah, there is a cod history book. I've not read it, but uh, where? Let me find it. Uh, here we go. Yeah, it's called Cod: A Biography of the Fish That Changed the World by Mark Kurlansk. Uh, so I'm reading like little excerpt. Kurlansky, excuse me. The cod. Wars have been fought over it. Revolutions have been triggered by it. National diets have been based on it. Economies and livelihoods have depended on it. To the millions it has sustained, it has been a treasure more precious than gold. This book spans 1,000 years and four continents. From the Vikings to Clarence Birdseye, Mark Kurlansky introduces the explorers, merchants, writers, chefs, and fishermen who, whose lives have been interwoven with this prolific fish. He chronicles the Cod Wars of the 16th and 20th centuries. He blends in recipes and lore from the Middle Ages to the present. In a story that brings world history and human passions into captivating focus, he shows how the most profitable fish in history is today uh, faced with extinction. So, um, I haven't read that. I do, I did recently grab this guy's book on milk, because I saw it in like a used bookstore. I went, what, a history of milk? I mean, I love milk. Uh, so... Why are some of the political map areas blacked out? I think it's because those are areas where there's no Senate race. Probably. I don't know. God, more of a fan of Battlefield. For Brazilian music. Let's get some Brazilian music going. I don't have that particular mod. Let me see if I can find some copyright free bossa nova or something. Bossa nova's groovy. Let's see here. Ooh, jazz. Let's listen to the jazz version. Oh, yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about, man. Pack it up, CHG lost to pack it up and leave, boys. The top half, some states are blacked out. Yeah, Kipsu, I see what you're saying. It's because I think that there's just, they're not, um, there's no, there's no race. There's no Senate race in those areas. That's why they're blacked out. Probably. Okay, new plans, old tactics. Uh, oh yeah, here we have, uh, Nagatoro. Uh, one more traitor. Adamar lift from a seat, strove out of the office, grabbed a stack of papers, and vaulted her chest, running after him as he. Yeah, yeah. Adamar's back to Sao Paulo. Went to a Brazilian music concert in your town, it was free. Nice. 
I always knew Brazil was an elevator. <laughs> that's why Boston. That's a, that's why Boston Nova music is used so much in like those lo-fi mixes you'll see on YouTube. Okay, we can run another campaign. We must have Sao Paulo or nothing. Close. Am I going to keep relations between Loft and Quadros satisfactory? No, we're going all in on Quadros. Okay, so this is Duloft. This was Quadros' historical uh, vice president. But fuck him! You start to smile. We're not going to read that because we're not doing that. It's a festive elevator. Is the, is the audio balance good? I'm not having, I'm not like, the music's not drowning me out, is it? Next year there will be Carnival. Yeah. Well, there's this one culture thing I hope comes back next year, but I'm not sure. Um, the Chopin Film, or not film, the Chopin Piano Festival they do in El Paso every year. It's like three shows of pianists performing Chopin. Um, it's, it's really awesome, but uh, the woman who runs it, she, and she always performed at the end of it, and she died. So I don't know what they're gonna do. Come on, one more, one more. The music's a bit loud. Okay, thank you. I'll put it down a bit. Oi, this is only like a four-minute track. Anyway, let's do some no copyright version. Here we go. Here's an hour of it. Oh yeah. Okay, so we got development edict available. We're going in on this Amazon project. So. Oh, we use up our political power. Toscano on patrol. Well, pirate vessels have been destroyed. Three have been captured, seven have fled, with zero casualties. The Germans will be pushed back one way or the other. Excellent. Doing good. Alright, so is the music volume better now? So, anti-piracy operations, I think we should do this first, or do we want to do the trip to the Congo? Let's do the trip to the Congo, because that's, that's going to be a fun one, and like I said, I'm probably not going to stream for very long. Oh, getting that flute, baby. Turns out building a massive looking highway in the jungle is not easy. It's going to be cool. Yeah, we're going to Africa. More likes than viewers. I like to see that. I really do. That means people, even before they left, they hit that thumbs up. Very sweet. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna have to hard... Shit. I just got a message. I'm gonna have to stop it in like 20, guys. Uh... Yeah, it was just the mess I was waiting for. You wanna see how I deal with the African pilots diplomatically? Oh yeah, so this is uh, this is another character you could potentially have rule, Lacerda. I'm actually not sure who that is. Very distinct uh, character design. Come on, come on! I think we just need one more. Yes! All right, Sao Paulo will be ours! Oh shoot, was I boosting the wrong one? Is this like a union party? Uh, no, yeah, it was the right one, I think. Mm -hmm. 
Sao Paulo is blue! Lacerda was a total Chad. I'm sure dresses like a Chad. Here we're doing the southeast. Say thank you to Sao Paulo, the Cerdo, the Crow. What an ass! Sorry, too much of a Vargas not to insult the Cerdo. Hey, go for it, go for it. I, I enjoy the bickering sometimes in the chat. Uh, well, not bickering, but you know, I like when people talk shit to a point, and I'll warn people I'm not gonna like ban somebody, but it keeps the chat active. Ripe harvest. Uh, Moto's lack of personnel. There was a thump. Heard the engine. The side of the swastika being lowered, being replaced by a flag of Brazil. Caught the interest of all those present. Earth provides enough to satisfy every man's needs, but not every man's greed. Okay, we can work on another Senate campaign now. I don't know. Where's one where it's kind of close? Well, maybe here. Yeah, we can pull this off. Yeah, we, we might be able to really make some magic happen. Yeah, I don't think uh, we're gonna we're gonna move much of Minas Gerais. Gerais. Not sure how it's pronounced. Okay, time to meet with Muller. Quadros now suggests sending Reichs Commissar Muller a letter in service of Quadros' goal of securing a more independent Brazilian foreign policy. If we can get a hold of him personally, we can try to get him to restrain the companies in his territory, but if it fails and the matter gets leaked, we will damage our credibility and anger the Americans who try to work with Nazis. Let's hope he accepts, and just as importantly, that everybody who knows about this plan keeps their damn mouth shut. You're gonna love this. <coughs> this is a fun event. Lacerda is Naga the Servant from Slayers. The literal Brazilian Delves told me to find the smuggest looking character ever, so I did. Must have gotten close to the mark because one of the South American team jokingly told me that I'd accidentally put in a photo of Lacerda. <laughs> Lacerda. Yeah. Meet with Mular. This is the right thing. Okay, hold on. Buddy, 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 this is the right thing, Senor Presidente. We need to talk this over with him. He's a nut, but he's far better if we can settle this with the Reichskommissar peacefully than to end up in a war with the Nazis right after the bat. Yeah. So, here we go. Leftists proved supported a military coup because they believed it was temporary. Yeah, well, like, freaking, um, what's his name? Aya de la Torre, the, the founder of, of the opera party in Parte, the party, the opera, the yeah, opera, the political party opera, with an A, with two A's. Um, he was, um, he loved the military coup that happened towards the end of his life because then they gave him power. <laughs> Hit it. Let's see, someone from Vietnam. Well, hello, nice to see you. Where do I live? I'm from the United States. There's nothing more permanent than a temporary measure. Didn't like, uh, wasn't that a Reagan speech from when he was on this docking circuit in the 60s? Of course, I'm sure Pete didn't write it. I'm sure someone else wrote it, but you know. Um, let's see, straight from Leopoldville. We got a bodyguard for the plane. Don't expect the Leopoldville consulate or Brazilian armed forces to be able to support you if things go south. We cannot guarantee timely response in Central Africa. Repo the genetic opera. <laughs> Cute. No Carmen in the opera. Repo the genetic opera. That's good. That's a good cult classic. It was like a my. It was like my generation's Rocky Horror Picture Show. Drake comes in a little glass vial. A little glass vial? A little glass vial. Yeah. You remember that part in the movie where Joan Jett shows up out of nowhere? 
uh, when she's just rocking out the main character, and then it's just that's freaking. Or did I say Joan Jet? Um, freaking yeah, Joan Jet. Yeah. The palace at Dawn's Edge. So this is Kubichan, also known to history as Husselino Kubitschek, who was um, historically the president before Quadros. Um, but I don't know how to pronounce the name, so I just say Kubichan, or here they say JK. <laughs> JK L O L. And I think in this timeline he was still the former president before Law. I like seeing those likes go up. That's cool. All right, time to meet with Mulao. Hold on, second Senate campaign. Okay, where can we do another switcheroonie? Ooh, maybe here? Or is there another spot that might be more susceptible? 7% there. Uh, we're getting strong. Uh, we're 23... Let's try to, yeah, Mato Grosso. So there was once, I was, I was once working on the computer and I had it just playing in another tab, um, this mix of music and it was, uh, that, that was, it was Japanese music. And then it started, and I wasn't really paying attention to it, it was just kind of in the background uh, while I was working on other stuff. You can dangle a lifetime supply of Brazilian lobster for the upper echelon or a few hundred all expense paid hunting trips in the Brazilian rainforest in front of Mueller to sweeten the deal. These negotiations will be tough, so we send Walter Saez. Uh, is it Saez? Is the double L the ya sound in Portuguese like in Spanish? Walter Saez, our best uh, diplomat to deal with these negotiations. Let us hope and pray that he is successful. Anyway, so I'm listening to this song and, and there's this. Uh, I'm listening to the music and the song comes on that I don't know, but it was kind of groovy, kind of had like a. I don't know, it had a good flow. So I go, well, what's playing? And and I, I stop what I'm doing, I look over into the other tab, and there's this woman dancing on the uh, dancing on the screen. It was like a music video. I don't know what the song was called because it was all in kanji. It's like Japanese uh, uh, kanji. It's it's like sail. Okay, so it's sail, not saye. Okay. Uh, let's do a quick save here. Uh, hold on a second. Sales in Central Africa. So just to finish up my story real quick, and then we'll read this event. Uh, so so I'm the song though. I go into the comments, and some and so there's this woman, and she's in a dress and dancing, and then this person in the comments is just going. You know, I really appreciate um, the vibe she's giving off here. She's very, um, like, she's obviously very sexy, but it's in an understated, in a subtle way that it comes through. Um, and then the first comment under that comment was somebody saying, dude, her ass is out for like 90% of the video. Because she had this, like, it was a dress in quotation marks, but like the skirt was really high and she's like moving around and doing this choreography on the floor or whatever. So it's just up and you're just seeing her, her panties the entire time. So it's just, but the, the only thing I remember was that like it, Mondo Grosso was in the title. That was the only part that wasn't in kanji, but apparently like Mondo Grosso is a, I don't know if they're a person or like a company, but if you just type in Mondo, like I'm gonna do it now, if you type in Mondo Grosso, there's just a ton of songs that pop up. Some of them have kanji, some of them are in English, but yeah, I don't, I don't know how to search that video. Um, Okay, so it's Sales. So it's pronounced Sales, and the A was right. Okay. Interesting. But yeah, I just thought that was so funny. And I was telling that story to a friend of mine. He's like, God, do these people think that the women read the comments? Like, oh, he called my sexuality understated but strong. I, I better contact him through his YouTube profile picture, and then we can fuck. <laughs> uh, so Sales. Okay. So Sales. Trent travels to Zendral, Africa. There was no accurate way to tell the time here. He lost count of the time zone, so he had no idea how late in the day it was. I'm sure Walter Morietta Sales 
had timed the hours from Rick, Rick Kife in the afternoon, but all he knew was Hitlerstad was in the middle of nowhere and it was dark. So Hitlerstad, I'm, I'm trying to if they actually show that on the map. Yeah, right here, Hitlerstad. This is where we're going. Uh, he knew things were going to take a turn for the strange when the jet switched over from the U.S. Air Base on Ascension Island to Leopoldville Traffic Control. As they came from the Gulf of Guinea, the order came to gain altitude and fly high and fast to avoid ground fire. This unnerving notice made Salas fearful of what was going uh, down in the jungle. Even on approach to Niji, Nijili Airport, the aircraft had to make rapid descent in a corkscrew motion to land, giving Salas a side window completely filled with land. He needed a drink as soon as the tires touched the ground, and they found a bottle of schnapps at the airport as the jet refueled. The flight to Hitlerstad was worse. The same maneuver had to be done to take off from the ground. The air offered no relief as the safest way to fly around the potential anti-aircraft fire was straight over the lake. With the sudden opening of a vast ocean somehow in the middle of Africa and rumors of how many aircraft were lost over the monstrosity circulating around the aircraft, Salas had no rest nor comfort for what he was about to do. Not that him standing on a semi-deserted airstrip in the middle of nowhere on a moonless night would help him anyway. The headlights appeared in the distance. Four or five Kubelwagens and Mercedes Benzes in green camo pulled up in front of the plane. The front two had machine guns mounted. Salas saw groups of soldiers get out with G1 rifles and face the plane. One in a beret came up to him and saluted him. Welcome to Hitlerstadt, Herr Salas, he said in accented English. General Field Marshal Ralf Stirner, at your service. Stein, excuse me, Steiner. Steiner, huh? Steiner the Nazi, huh? Here we go. Um, so, Salas eats lobsters. The romantic notions of African hunting lodges or grand colonial era hotels Salas had did not materialize at the Hitlerstadt resort. Remember, this is where here, we're up here. Um, the Egyptian or South African hotels had a certain old charm for them. Even the newer Hiltons or Yamatos could have, have at least a modern appearance in their interior. Even if the structures looked the same if you looked at them enough. Hitlerstadt, on the other hand, was nothing more than a collection of poras, a cement monstrosity more situated to be, suited to be a blockhouse guarding the White Beach than a place of relaxation and entertainment. Seems like something. Oh, wait, what's this? Now, if you caught the Tino Dev stream the other day, they're adding a post game arcade mode where you can start a no nukes World War III with all major powers declaring on each other. Oh, yeah, that is fun. Yeah, yeah, arcade mode. I'd like arcade modes in games. Anyway, uh. The special suite he was staying in was thankfully removed from the main complex, but it looked more designed to mirror Gerding's home than an Afro German design. Amusingly, most of the wait staff were native Africans dressed in the white uniforms of the SS mess waiters. Somehow, despite the propaganda, even here the Germans were unable to block the influences of the land they plundered from. Inside the dining room, decorated with various trophies from long deceased animals, was a giant table made from rare wood in the jungle. Far on the other side was Rolf Steiner, wearing his same field uniform with the beret still on his head, nursing a glass of Gaffer Kolsch. The, uh, oh, Kolsch. I like Kolsch's. Um, the, I once had a roasted Kolsch, so, like, they roasted the malts, or, like, they put coffee bean in it or something, but really, really nice. Never, it was, like, a specialty item. Never seen it again. Want me to turn down the music? Okay. There we go. Turned it down a bit. Okay. Uh, maybe a little bit more. Just a pinch. There we go. That's it. Not going any lower than that. Uh, dinner was a surprise, but not a pleasant one. The unveiling of the lobster bisque with lobster tails, asparagus, and potato salad no doubt gave Steiner a source of amusement, but it put Salas off all the time, though the French wine they paired with it was wonderful. He couldn't help but think about where this had come from. No doubt these should be in a Brazilian household, sold off by a local fisherman, who now may have had to go hungry because of what these bastards did. The conversation was mostly small talk, with Steiner sharing off-putting tales of his time in the military and his childhood. After finishing off the lemon cheesecake, Steiner finished off his second glass of beer before looking at his adversary. Shall we begin, Herr Salles? Okay, discussion over trade begins. The whole middle bit of the Atlantic. That? 
Steiner I said with a degree of hostility. That's everybody's ocean. Us, the Japs, the Yankees, everyone has a right to it. How dare you think that you can take a part of it and kick us out? The Cape Verde plan, said Salas, is neutral territory for shipping. Uh, and fishing for the most part, yes. But there remain certain territories by international law that belong to the people of Brazil. The continental shelf of South Africa is by law Brazilian territory. And our government has the right to regulate the harvest of spiny lobster from the territory. But... Steiner began as he took a sip of his beer. They're fish, aren't they? They swim. This isn't on the continental shelf, so when they're in the water and they're fair game. You may say that, but our view is that we have a right to stop you if you keep wanting to harvest the lobster there. You need to stop it and abide by our regulations. That's what this is about. All right. So, what are your regulations? Excuse me? Steiner smiled. Let me spell it out for you. How much can we fish there? What's your deal to end this horse shit before it gets any worse? So, okay, so we want Quadros' influence to grow at all times, so we're going to say we'll give equal access. So this means we're going to get a horrible settlement, which is going to increase our consumer goods factory, and it's going to worsen our... God, this is actually really fucking bad. Maybe some. I think we'll just do some. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we're going to get the great... It's very unlikely. And plus, that's going to help a lot, which we don't want. So let's try to say some fishing will be permitted. Let me make a quick save file here. We're actually about to wrap it up for the day. Uh, yeah, just another couple minutes. Come on, come on, come on. Some fishing will be permitted. Hopefully we can get to the, uh, the thing you can look forward to in the next episode. I don't want to see that event happen. Senado campaign. Uh, where was it else we were trying to... Yeah, right here. Boom! Another Senate seat! <laughs> Going real good. The Germans are rejecting it. You aren't really arrogant enough to think you can limit us. You want to claim that anything in the Atlantic Ocean that touches the ground is Brazilian property? You think you can bully us? God damn it. You want to escalate this? We're meeting you halfway here. This is the reasonable agreement the drunken crowd had tossed. Now he would have to either accept the threat or need to leave the table and say diplomacy had failed. So we could say leave with a bowed head. So we signed the deal. So we get the horrible settlement. But you see, then we're not even going to get the Quadros buff from it. Fuck. You know what? We're going to figure this out next time. I'm just going to stop it there, but uh, I don't know. I don't know if we'll have to load a save, but this is bullshit. Um... Anyway, thank you very much for joining me. I'm Conquering History Games. Uh, we'll get more Lammy going in the future. Uh, I'm trying to think when I'll next stream. Probably not tomorrow. You guys know I don't like to stream on Fridays and Saturdays, but I don't know. We'll see. Maybe Sunday. Uh, in the meantime, keep an eye out for some Brazil stuff to go up. I'm Conquering History Games. You all have yourselves a pleasant evening and good night. Sorry that I had to go suddenly. Thank you, Matt. Oh, and uh, Yeti, if I don't if I don't see you again, good, I hope I hope your trip goes well uh, on the ship. And take care, be safe. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's the alarm saying I definitely definitely have to go. Yeah, take care, be safe, and uh, hope to see you in the future. Uh, and happy New Year in advance if you end up spending it out there and all the other holidays. Okay, good night.